Hi, I'm Alan and this is Daddy. Today we're at Fort Necessity where we're going to learn two things that are going to surprise the heck out of you. First, the First World War was not the First World War. And second, George Washington started the First World War when he murdered a guy. I know you think we make this stuff up half the time, but we really do try to be accurate. And when Daddy gets it all wrong, we have the title cards to correct him. This time, we have got, I've got the proof right here in my hands. But first we have to take you back to 1747. At that time, this land was called the Ohio Country, which is a little confusing because right now we're in southwest Pennsylvania. We're going to have to go to the whiteboard for this one. We're here. The Ohio Country was this area here and nobody really knew where the western boundary of Pennsylvania was because no one had traveled over the mountains to figure it out. West Virginia was still part of Virginia, but no one knew where that border or the border of Maryland was either. Pittsburgh is where the Allegheny River and the Monongahela River formed the Ohio River, but the city of Pittsburgh didn't exist yet either. So what you have here is a whole lot of prime real estate and nothing on it. You have the French up in Canada and the British on the East Coast and the Native Americans all over the place. So you have to ask, who owned this land? Well, probably the correct answer is the deity who created it, but that doesn't help because the Native Americans were basically part of the land, just like the animals and trees. But you had a French king and a British king who each believed that they ruled by divine right, meaning that God wanted them to manage this land for them. You might disagree with that notion, but that's what they thought. So, the Native Americans just wanted to live off the land like they had always done. The French wanted to take the resources from the land, particularly furs, and send them back to Europe. The British went even further and wanted to actually settle the land. The French, who had trading posts in Canada and all along the Mississippi River, naturally wanted to connect the two by taking over the Ohio River Valley. The British formed a company called the Ohio Company to build roads and settlements and forts in the area. The company was led by Lawrence Washington and Augustine Washington Jr., who just happened to be George Washington's older half-brothers, and was directed by the governor of Virginia, Robert Dinwiddie, on behalf of King George II. The natives were busy fighting other natives and would often take sides with whomever had the best offer. So, the French began to build forts slash trading posts all along the rivers. And the uh, Governor Dinwiddie and uh, George's big brothers sent little Georgie, well, 21 years old Georgie, up to Fort LaBeouf to uh, uh, ask the French to kindly leave. But George didn't speak any French, so it didn't go over too well. Uh, he brought a note, and the note told the French to clear out of the Ohio country, but the French Commandant said that they were uh, operating under orders from higher-ups, so he told George he'd have to take his note somewhere else. Well, George went back to Governor Dinwiddie, and he said, no, you have to go back, and what I want you to do is to clear the French out of there and uh, build uh, some sort of fort at the Forks of the Ohio, which is where Pittsburgh is today. had the same idea, only with a lot more men. Before the British even began to build, the French ran them off and built their own Fort Duquesne. The British retreated to where we're standing and made camp. This is a terrible low-lying spot flooded out by spring rains. Remember, everybody except the natives were new at this wilderness fighting thing. The natives were a very fractious bunch. One Mingo chief, Tana Cherison, also known as Half King, hated the French and sided with Washington, and Half King was nasty. This is where it gets a little bit murky. You see, Half King discovered that the French were following the British, and they were led by a guy named Joseph Coulomb de Villiers de Jumonville. And the French, though, claimed that Jumonville was actually on a diplomatic mission just to tell the British to clear out. Well, either way, the British surrounded, killed, and scalped Jumonville and nine other Frenchmen. Twenty-one men were taken prisoner. The British buried the dead in shallow graves and returned to camp. Then they sent the prisoners to Williamsburg. Well, the good news is that uh, George Washington won his first battle in about 15 minutes. The bad news is that he knew the French were going to retaliate. So he calls for reinforcements and he gets about 300 men and, and well, a, a few supplies. Uh, but the natives didn't really want to help him at all. So anyway, he retreats here and then builds this rather pathetic looking fort, uh, which he 
decides to call Fort Necessity. Now, naturally, the French were a little upset. They sent a force led by Louis Coulomb de Villiers, who was Germainville's brother, and the French advanced easily along the roads the British had built. Now picture this, Washington is in this fort behind me, he's up to his knees in water with 400 other guys, a limited amount of food, and wet gunpowder. It was a complete disaster. But fortunately for Washington, the French feared the British would send reinforcements, so they offered Washington terms of surrender. Aha! At last, that is what I have right here in my hand. This is the very piece of paper that George Washington signed. No, it's not. That's a copy we bought in the gift shop. <laughs> You don't believe in the magic of YouTube, that's your problem. Now, I'm going to read this to you. It says, um, the capitulation du fort necessity. Capitulation you with Cordes. Did you read that in French? Or you, you tried French at Niagara Falls and it was a complete disaster. But, but you see, this is exactly the point, is that I'm lousy with French, but so was George Washington and the head of this piece of paper that was all sort of rained on and muddy and ink stained and he had a clue what he was signing, which was a problem. Because what it says in here is, it says that George Washington had assassinated, effectively murdered Joseph Coulomb de Vie de Jamonville. George Washington murdered a guy. True? I don't know. Yes, maybe. Uh, well, I mean, we, all we know is that George Washington signed this document, so uh, maybe he was responsible for the murder, but at least we know that he started the uh, French and Indian War. Uh, he lost his first battle, but the French and Indian War would ultimately go on to uh, 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 touch off the Seven Years' War, which would take place in North America, in, in the Caribbean, on the high seas, it would take place in Africa and Europe and in the Philippines, and it really was one of the First World Wars, and it, it caused a million casualties. So, what are we supposed to learn from this? Well, I suppose what we learn is that, that George Washington, who could not have been in a worse position than this, would ultimately go on to become not only one of the greatest military leaders, but the father of our country. I mean, if you can be that far down and still come out on top, well, that's pretty darn good. And, and along those lines, if, if, if I keep reading this, I figure I'll eventually learn French, so I'm, I'm going to keep working on this. And while he does that, I'd like to thank the National Park Service. They have an outstanding visitor center, and you can visit their channel by clicking on the link here. And you can subscribe to our channel for more great videos. Like us, pin us, tweet us, and leave a comment. And, and most of all, uh, kids, get your parents, parents, get your kids and go out and see a, a museum or a concert or a battlefield or something. Just get out and do something.